simple ways you can become really assertive in your life without sounding to be arrogant especially at your workplace and even at home the first thing is that know your worth only if we know how deserving we are and what our caliber is and if we give ourselves due importance will people around us start treating us that way and only if people treat us at a certain level will they listen to us so the first point is to know your worth secondly be present you have to really really become conscious about being present in every situation whenever there's a discussion happening give in your 100% of presence over there only when you listen to what's the conversation will you gain that knowledge to then give any feedback and you will not sound stupid so if you start being present it becomes very easy to give suggestions where you will be heard and you will also be assertive and people start giving you that respect which you deserve the third thing is that always try to come with win win solutions always think about how you can with this solution or with this statement of yours help the other person also to benefit out of it so will you benefit and once you given such a beautiful suggestion where the other person knows that he is at a win win there is no way they would not accept it they would love to take in your suggestions and the last and the final thing is that speak up half the times we are speaking in our head and we are wondering why are people not listening to me we keep everything inside us and we start feeling this hollow that oh my god we are not respected and nobody listens to us and our suggestions aren't valued so guys try these four simple ways and you are only going to be looking really pleasing to people in fact people will really want to give you that respect and will want to hear more of you enjoy yourself thank you victim of your own judgment where we are so hard on ourselves on what we've done in our lives something at that moment which we decided to do which was which made sense at that moment only because it resonated with our thinking with our understanding with the situation of course we are not stupid to do something which we think is not right if we had taken that decision there was some meaning to it Why then do we go back to it and then regret doing that thing? Because you know what? If we knew better, we would do better. Of course, the present version of us would think differently because we have grown. We have experienced so much in our life. Our beliefs have changed. There have been situations where people regret, "Oh my god, I wish I wouldn't have sent my child to that school. Oh my god, I wish I wouldn't have taken up this course." I would have had a better career to choose from. But you know what? At that moment, you did what you thought was best. So, stop being mean to yourself. Stop being hard on yourself. You are what you are today because of the decisions you made in the past. So don't regret because if you knew better, you would do better. Thank you. might walk inside at 9:30 while the reporting time is 9:30 but you in your personality believe that you are supposed to be 5 minutes earlier than the reporting time no matter where you have to be so i want you to notice how we don't see things as they are we see the world as we are our beliefs our experiences our thoughts make us believe that this is how the world is and that's how we start judging the world have you noticed that you might go to some place and you might find it extremely beautiful and nobody else would actually be able to see that exact beauty you felt about that place because that's your personality which makes you think something so i want you to allow everybody to live their life and enjoy different personalities in your life So every time you feel a situation is not right or someone is not right I want you to know maybe 
you are not right the way you see the world. Maybe there might be something you need to go check. So be proud that you are different. Nobody can see the world as you can see. So nobody can do what you can do in this world. There is a reason you're here. There is a reason you are living. Make the most out of it. Thank you. Most of us are trying to reach some place in life. Some goal which is out of the box, big, exciting. My only fear in this journey is that what if success goes into my head? Or what if I fail? Because I know that's going to be either success or it's going to be failure in whatever I do, every step. Whenever we venture out to do anything in life, we know there are going to be two outcomes. We are either going to be successful or we are going to face failure. And these two outcomes actually completely, they, they affect our, the way we do things. Imagine if I have a big goal and I have small, you know, few smaller goals to achieve my big goal. What happens is when in my first small goal, I fail, I give up my bigger goal. Is that right? I don't think so. What if just the next goal was going to lead me to my success. What if I was to become really big if I would just allowed myself to reach second small goal? But we don't allow ourselves that because of we only judge our being with either success or failure. Since a child, we are born, we go to school, we get our marks, we either fail or we either pass. This whole journey of success and failure is a constant in our life. It completely determines the way we lead our life. At times, I don't do so many things because I know I will fail in it. And the things I know I'm successful, I'm doing it with all my heart. Is that correct? But you know, what am I losing? In the whole process of choosing, I am losing things. I might have been a failure in at the first go. I would have been more successful. This is my story. When I started out, I was a failure in as a coach for my first three months. I didn't have a single plan. What if I would have allowed my failure to get into my head? I wouldn't have been this successful. I started out with a simple formula where my success and failure would be treated the same. I would not allow both to affect me. I would learn from both and I would celebrate both. So every time I either fail or I succeed, I don't allow my success to get into my head because I want to remain humble. And I want to become better. So is with failure. I don't want failure to affect my being. I don't want to stop doing something which I know I really want to and I'm capable of. Because I will fail. I learn from my mistakes. I learn from my success. If I know I've been successful, I know I've done something right. And what have I done right? Let me do it again. Let me become better. When I fail, I know I've done something wrong. Let me not repeat it. Let me not do it again. And I celebrate both with equal importance and equal excitement. When I'm feeling, I'm excited. Now I know I'm not good at this. I have realized it. What a beautiful realization. I know I'm not going to waste my time at this. Let me learn a skill which can make it better. I'm celebrating because I know I've done something amazing. I know I deserve this celebration. So just get out. Just do whatever you've been, you, whatever you wanted to do. And don't let a success or failure stop you or make your journey any different. You know where you have to head, just go that direction. In life, it's normal to get hurt by people's behavior. It can be something they've done to us or it can be something they've you know, said to us. And you know, those things which they tell us, it starts building up inside, we get frustrated about it and it, we went it out at a particular point. This happened to me with my husband when he started to play too much of video games. And at one point I started getting really angry. 
because I was angry and upset for one simple reason that that was our time together. Like after work, we would get this time to spend time with each other. So subconsciously, I think I went in this zone where I, it started to trouble me and frustrate me so much that I started discussing this problem with everybody I met, everybody who was close to me rather. There was one day where we were sitting and playing his video game and enjoying himself and I told him something and I didn't get a response back from him. And that's the day I got most upset and I chose not to speak to him. This poor boy failed to understand why I was so upset. And at one point through the, throughout like the whole day I didn't speak to him and by the night he came up to me and asked me, what happened? Why are you behaving the way you're behaving? And I looked at him and told him that you know what you've started to play so much video games that I'm not getting so much attention from you as much as used to get previously without these. And he looked at me and very sweetly told me, oh I didn't know that this was your issue. I never knew you had a problem with me playing my video game. I thought you were enjoyed because there were so many people coming over home or we went somewhere and I thought you were enjoying the zone. That's when I realized that complaining is perfectly normal but there's a catch to complaining. We land up complaining to the whole world about the issue we have rather than complaining to the person whom we have an issue with. Because the more I complained about my husband to other people, nobody could fix that issue. And it frustrated me way more like my frustration went on adding on. I rather should have just gone and told this to my husband and complained to him that listen, I'm unhappy with your behavior and he would have fixed it instantly. So the beauty of our complaining is that remember, complain. Because you take it off your system, it, you can vent it out. But complain to the right person. Because nobody can help you. There are people who come home and complain about work to their wives. The wife cannot do much. If you have a problem with your boss, go let him know about it. So the rule number one of complaining is choose to share it with the person you have an issue with and you will have a solution instantly. Hi guys, if you liked my video, like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel and support me to help people recreate their destiny. Hello and welcome everybody. Today I want to speak about anxiety. I'm sure all of us at some point in our lives have felt a little anxiety in certain situations. And what is this anxiety? Basically feeling nervous, getting worried about something, getting worried when you basically don't know the outcome. In an uncertain situation is when you will see yourself feeling more anxious. And my biggest encounter with anxiety was the night I was to move cities. So I had decided to get married to this guy who was from another city and I was to fly next morning to get married to him. That very night, I we always sitting, getting everything organized. We had a flight to catch next morning. Everybody was, you know, getting their luggage, the tickets organized. Everybody was seeing that everything is at place. And that's the moment the air tickets came up. So everybody in my family and my friends had their return tickets, a two-way ticket. The only person in the whole group without a return ticket was me. I was going with a one-way ticket with no certainty to return. Of course, when you get married, this is how things are. You're going to be with the person. But suddenly, it started striking me so hard that I started having goosebumps. I felt so weak in my knees. I couldn't stand. I, I could feel the shivers. All of a sudden, I went down, went out to my father with tears rolling in my eyes and I looked at him and I told him Pa, I'm going with other return ticket I have no idea when I would be back He was as emotional as I could be But he didn't know how to help me out He consoled me by saying things that you know It is all going to be good, life is great, the boy is good and Everybody came around me, tried to console me with how things would be at its best after getting married but nothing really helped me I was in that zone feeling so anxious doubting my decision to get married to a guy and shifting my cities 
I was not leaving my family, friends. I was leaving a part of me. Of I was leaving my comfort zone. I was leaving my existence. That's how it felt at that moment. It was time to go to bed. I have, of course, I didn't sleep that night. There was no way I could sleep because every time I tried to sleep, I would get more fearful. I could feel that this, you know, I wanted to hold this moment right there because this was almost like the last night I could spend in my own house. Have you felt that that feeling of you know going away and never to return? So I went inside. I quickly took a pen and a paper, and I started penning down all the cons, all my fears, all my anxiety, which I thought this marriage and me shifting cities would have. I made a whole list and trust me the list was as long as a five pager. I wrote them down and it was I first got it out of my system. Then everywhere I wrote my cons, I started mentioning the pros, the benefits, the future I hold if I took this big step of my life. And trust me, the pros were a eight pager. I knew what I was getting into was for a better future it was going to give me a life which which was amazing because i had a brilliant family which i was getting married into my husband was amazing the city was so beautiful i was getting married into bombay everything was good the eight pager pros was in good enough proof that what i was doing was right there was no way i had to worry this was at the moment i was fearful and that is why i was doubting my decision and the moment i did this simple exercise i went into a zone of acceptance i started accepting that this is my life and i think to go to the next level in my life this was the most important step how many times in life do we come across these big decisions which we have to make these big opportunities which come our way it can be a new job a new business starting up something big and we always go back or we miss those opportunities because anxiety sets in it's normal to have fear of the unknown but if what you're doing is perfect and is good the benefits which you would reap are going to be so much more superior than that momentary anxiety and this simple exercise will always help you to deal with momentary anxiety and make you take such beautiful and big decisions of your life with so much of ease that the moment you look back you would thank your stars that you did this today i look back and i thank my stars i did this simple exercise and i'm married to the man of my dreams and life couldn't have been better what a beautiful opportunity in my life god gave me and i'm glad i took it up so every time you feel anxious just quickly pen down the pros and cons you will have complete clarity and you'll start believing your decision and once you are in believing when you're in the state of believing and accepting you would see how beautifully you live that decision thank you so much guys for watching if you liked my video like share comment please subscribe to my youtube channel and help me help people recreate their destiny thank you very much I am sure nobody enjoys being in an argument. And every time we are in an argument, we are only wondering and imagining and thinking of ways to avoid it. Because actually arguments happen where we are fighting over wanting to win who is right and who's wrong. And in this whole process, we lose out on a relationship and we fail to understand the other person's point of view. Because before the other person wants to tell us anything, we have our own point of view where we are fighting over getting approval on it what if i had to fight knowing that the other person is completely right and so am i how can we take this forward how can we sit and discuss this matter rather than arguing over it why not today we come from a new perspective where we know that both of us are right both of us what we both have to say is the truth but the truth in the other person's head and the truth in my head is always going to be different that's why we are human beings that's why we are different 
so go out there and enjoy your arguments right now with this perspective and you would see how quickly your arguments will start fizzling out how the smaller arguments will remain small and not move into something bigger because this is what happens when i'm wanting to prove one particular point i'm actually we have you noticed in the fight we then go up to but you did this that time that small issue starts building up 10 other issues it doesn't serve us we just keep digging up past and we both gain nothing out of it so today argue with a new perspective perspective of knowing that both of you all are right let me know on how you how this works for you because this works brilliantly for me thank you so much for watching my video if you like my video please feel free to like share and subscribe to my youtube channel because you would help me help others recreate their destiny a lot of women come up to me and their only complaint with their husband would be that they don't talk how to get a man to talk to us in our daily routine we get so carried away that that's way little time we you know get to spend with each other and we love to know about each other's day and as women of course we enjoyed way more we want to know what our husband is up to and that's when we feel that yes we know them enough we women really want our men to speak to us but do we have the patience to listen to them it's very rightly said that men are from mars women are from venus because we both are so different our likings are so different our wants are so different and what happens our husband here wants to you know come up to us and tell us about his day which includes sports which includes business and at times we don't really want to know that but guess what that's how we stop our men to talk to us so every time your man comes home i want you to go and just ask him one question so how was your day look at him patiently give him that 10 minutes leave everything which is around Just give him that ten minutes. Sit with him and just know about his day. The connect you start building in your relationship becomes so much more superior. I'm warning you; it might be boring at times. Ten minutes in a day is something we can give our husbands, we can give our boyfriends, whoever this man in your life is. It can be your brother. Patiently sit down, listen to their day. It might include whatever it has to include. Just become a part of their lives. Somehow men feel connected when they get to know that the women in their life is interested. Be excited when you're listening to him. The amount of excitement you show when you're listening to his conversation is the amount of excitement he will have to come and tell you things. So for all you women out there who really want your man to start talking, first become a good listener and start showing interest in to in things which he has interest in. Once this happens, you would see your man change and he would see your man starting to confide in you so start with asking how was your day and see how beautifully the conversation starts to flow if you like my video please like share comment and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel because you would help me help a lot many recreate their destiny thank you very much We all want to have effective communication with people we come across. That's because communication is the key to a good relationship. It can be at home and work. But we always fail to realize that the most important key for effective communication is the art of listening. When we communicate, we somehow skip the portion where we really have to listen to the other person. We give so much importance to the talking. to you know how to how to our body language to how do we speak to someone but what we forget that we forget to listen to the other person so the tip for today is for the best communication with anybody you meet today really become a listener and listen not to speak listen to really understand their perspective Anger is just an emotion. 
people tend to get angry when things don't go as per them when it's out of their tolerance level and few people get way angrier than the others because their level of tolerance is way lesser than the others it's as simple as that and the most easiest way to curb anger would be that i want you to first start noticing what are your triggers what are your things which get you angry is that some particular person is that some particular topic is that some particular circumstance when you are aware about that what happens is before you get into the zone of getting extremely angry you can control yourself because you know you will either avoid that situation or when you're in that situation you will start focusing more on knowing that it's your trigger than to get angry so once you've identified your triggers when you're in that zone and when you can see the anger build up which is an emotion try to change that emotion to something else either start laughing either start breathing really heavy either start just walking around is just that you're going to transform your emotion to do something else that is why it would now not come out as anger whereas it was just come out in another form and you've accomplished what you desired you have controlled your anger by just doing this so enjoy a stress free angry free life where people are enjoying your company and you're enjoying your own company thank you about how to deal with a breakup are you going through a breakup are you feeling that pain in your chest or like almost something is piercing it and this one is for you i don't want you to go into this whole zone where you are upset about why this happened to you or now what will happen next rather i want you to go in the zone where you realize that you attracted this person because you are of a certain level Now it's your time to make the change. If you want to attract better, because I know the only way you can move on is by finding someone better. And to find someone better, you have to make yourself better first. So stop focusing on your breakup. So right now don't waste time crying over what you've lost. This is your time. Now do things you never did for yourself. Love yourself more. Go out spend time with people you used to ignore when you were otherwise in a relationship. Right now go out and see what you can do to make yourself better, to attract better, to attract that person who deserves you. This year is a very different kind of birthday I have planned for myself. As last year when I was newly married, I got into the day of my birthday with a lot of expectations from my husband. You know, surprise me with presents, to plan this fancy party. And of course he did host a party, but I remember walking into the party and he very sweetly and innocently looked into my eyes and asked me, "Baby, you have cut two cakes yesterday so I didn't bother to order a cake today. I hope that's okay." Of course I said okay, but I wasn't okay. that moment was a beautiful milestone in my life only because i realized he was a very different personality and how i was expecting what i would have done for him for him to do for me because i had planned his birthday i had done a certain setup for him i expected him to do the same for me i started noticing how many relationships in my life do i do this with i actually have a whole expectation from because you know what i did this for you so you better be there for me so the irony is that relationships like this are not beautiful they are not out of the flow so you my husband who was just a non birthday person did what he could do best for me he spent the whole day for me but that day on my birthday i chose not to appreciate him not to focus on what he's done because i was living in my zone of expectations i was expecting from him 
what I would have done for him. What a waste of a day. Since that day, I've lived this whole year with a beautiful motto. My motto is, I would expect of others only what I can do for myself. If I expect someone to do something for me, I would land up doing it for my own self. So this year what I did was, I just happened to go book a beautiful cake for myself, bought myself presents, planned my whole day with things I would love. And not only that, I hosted a own party. I called the manager of this place and I told him, listen, I want you to make the birthday girl feel extra special. When he, out of his curiosity, asked me, ma'am, so how is this birthday girl related to you? And I took absolutely no shame in letting him know that I was planning this birthday for myself. Because guess what? The moment we stop expecting from others and do things for ourselves to make ourselves happy, not only are we happier people, but also we have a better relationship with that person. Today when I know that my husband is going to be spending 24 hours with me, I appreciate that. So this birthday that is today, I am going to enjoy spending all my time with my husband because what I expected of him, I've already done for myself. How many relationships in our life do we only lose because of expectations? Those relationships happen to fizzle out of our lives. What a waste of such beautiful people around us. They might not even know that we expect this of them. They are just doing what they think is best for us. We live in our zone of expectations and we remain unhappy. So just go out there without any expectations from anybody. So I wake up in the morning and I think to myself, what do I expect for someone else to do for me today? is what I would do for myself. There is no expectations from anybody right now. My happiness doesn't rely on anybody but myself. What a happier space to be in. Fortunately or unfortunately, the people who put us down so many times happen to be our own family members and I know it's overwhelming because we wonder that these are the people whom we expect at most support from and they are the people who are actually doubting us. I want you to know that it's easy to deal with such people. All you have to do is to start ignoring them. At this point, I'm sure you might be thinking only if ignoring was so easy. Of course it is. It is easy only once you stop taking what they say to you personally. Know that what they say to put you down. That statement comes out of their beliefs on what they think you can do and what they think people can do. So they actually don't mean it to you. Once you start taking what they say so lightly, it will stop affecting you. And now no matter what they say, you are still going to do what you wish to do. So guys, go out there and be comfortable in ignoring people who put you down. Know that they don't mean it personally. And really, we cannot change people, but we can change the way we think. So, enjoy this journey. Thank you. this happy world but even in this happy world there are negative emotions and it is normal I would say that everybody when you have a negative emotion present in your body you're not feeling good about yourself or something it's best to vent it out express it in some form or at least accept it because you know what 90% of the diseases we are dealing with today in our life is because of suppressed emotions. In fact, the most major diseases which we get is because we are not able to express ourselves enough. It's a whining for a long period of time, a month or days or hours. I have learned how to express my emotion quickly, vent it out and feel completely normal from within. I don't suppress them but I express them and that is the key of a happy life. I want you to become the doctor of your own life. When you tell yourself that this too shall pass, you have already gone to the next level of feeling comfortable. Once you feel comfortable, it's way easier to express what you're feeling. Then quickly take a piece of paper or you know, just say it out loud wherever that feeling in your body is. 
and once you say that you release that feeling it can be that you've had a fight with someone it can be that you are having a bad day because things are not going as per your liking just write that down or speak it out and release it and once you've done this you're done with your emotion you have released the emotion from your body completely and thoroughly and you are bound to become positive that very second deal with every emotion this way and you will see that your life will feel so much lighter and so much better enjoy your journey because you deserve a happy life thank you body needs a detox don't you think because we've been eating the pollution we live in and i'm sure a lot of us are taking care of this detox in our life but what about a mental detox every day after you come back from work or after your day is done i want you to start becoming conscious to do a mental detox because it's simple it's all what you do in your daily life you just have to now get conscious about doing it the first thing you can do to give yourself a mental detox is to take a nice conscious shower just go under the shower and feel the water you know pouring on you every drop go in that zone become calm release when the water goes below think that you're releasing your emotion you're releasing the stress for the day just a simple shower will make you feel so rejuvenated then just get out of the shower and decide not to touch your phone for half an hour give yourself a digital detox you know when we are actually seeing a screen we are seeing people in the screen we are seeing our friends what they are doing where people are going it is a lot of mental processing in our mind we already as human being have around 60000 to 80000 thoughts per day and the more we see the more we come across the more our thoughts increase if you give yourself a digital detox with your phone in the side just for half an hour you will see how that for the half an hour your mind becomes calmer because there's not too much to process and that is all we need to give our mind and the last thing you can try is to journal just take a book and pen down all your thoughts you have for the day you can write what you feel right now how your day was write your gratitude in that journal every day before you go to bed if you can just do these three things trust me you will feel so much lighter in your mind you know why we snooze our phone why we need to put five alarms to wake up in the morning is because we sleep with so much mental baggage if you do this detox next morning you will for sure wake up excited for your new day thank you bad mood and you're really trying hard to be okay and you don't know what's irritating you that gets even worse because you're you know doing everything normally and still there's something going in on the back of your mind and it's not allowing you to be at your best self there might be something which has happened something which is troubling you and you you know like from one situation you have to move to another and you're trying it hard to cope up in the new situation where you're technically supposed to be happy The beauty of something like this is you have a way to get happy instantly and that is by just smiling. Just smile. You know when you do the simple thing it has a whole direct connection to your brain. Your brain starts releasing these chemicals which are feel good chemicals. No matter what mood you are, no matter what's going around you, there is no way your mood will not get fixed if you just put on a smile on your face have you seen these laughing clubs which happen of course there is nothing to laugh about but they are still trying hard to laugh and they're trying it increases blood circulation it reduces your stress at any moment you're sitting at work and you really want to fix your mood just smile when you're in the middle of an argument in the middle of a conflict 
just smile a smile is infectious once you smile people around you start smiling your energy around you changes your energy within changes such a beautiful simple way and how little importance do we give it so today just smile and spread joy all around you this is rishita makija signing off enjoy a smiling happy day I love social media because that's how I'm connected to y'all. But social media gives me my moments where I get affected because 80% of the people post such amazing posts on social media where someone is traveling, someone is doing something I was longing to do, someone is sharing the success story, someone is meeting up with someone whom I was waiting to meet. People are doing such amazing things and it's all out there in the open. Sharing an amazing relationship. And when I see all of this, at times I start feeling really jealous. My jealousy makes me react very differently. I don't know if any of y'all have come across this feeling. I start making these statements subconsciously in my mind. Like when I see someone having a million views on their video, I think they're paying for it. When I see someone living this amazing relationship, I think it's all fake and just for the camera. When I see someone doing phenomenally well in their business, I think he just got lucky. And there are these hundred statements which I make in regards to everything that I consciously and subconsciously actually desire. But just because I don't have it, my jealousy makes me say this. These statements I make out of my jealousy just to pacify myself and give reasons to myself on why I don't have them. But you know what I'm doing in the process? I'm sending out a message to the universe that it's okay that I don't have it and I'm giving the universe reasons for it not to be given to me. I remember an incident back in my modeling days. There was this particular shoot which I really wanted to do with this particular brand. But just because I didn't get it and I saw other people doing it, I kept saying it to people that you know what, I'm not doing it because it's not my style and you won't believe what happened. I was just about to get a call next day for this shoot but it didn't happen because I had said this statement out loud near someone who was organizing the shoot. I was dying to work with them but because of such statements of mine, the coordinator got to know that I wasn't interested in such shoots and she never approached me. So now I've realized on how it's amazing to be happy about people doing what they do because when you see someone prosper, know that if they can do it, so can you do it. Be happy, celebrate with them. Because when you celebrate with someone, you're increasing your vibration and your energy towards success. So rather than being jealous about these people, gain inspiration from them. Know that if they can do it, so can you. Make them your role models, allow them to give you better goals in life. I'm sure you like my video, so like, share and comment. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because you can support me to help people recreate their destiny. Thank you. simple mantras to have an amazing and positive week. The first thing is that learn to close your accounts. Like in March, we close our accounts and we move on to a new year with fresh strategies, with fresh outlook, with a fresh perspective. That's how we must learn to deal with the week. So every Monday or Sunday, sit down and decide that you are going to leave the previous week behind and go ahead and whatever has happened in the previous week is not of your concern right now you are going to take back the learnings and you're going to forget about things in which didn't work for you and just aim at becoming better with that perspective when you enter a new week there is an amazing vibe secondly plan your week this is really important. The problem with us is that we just go ahead and enter a new week without realizing what we really want to achieve from it. Then what happens once this week ends, we go back to you know, thinking and are upset that oh my god, what a waste of this week, I could have done this, I could have done that. Where you can include equal time or sufficient time which will fulfill your soul with family and with your work. Because a good balance is very, very important in life to feel fulfilled. The third point is celebrate. 
don't forget to celebrate. We have a usual Saturday night out or one dinner which we have always planned to do with family or friends. I want you to make it a very conscious celebration for yourself where I want you to go and you know applaud yourself for doing what amazing work you've carried down throughout the week. I want you to treat yourself with something which you would have wanted to eat or you wanted to go some place. This celebration is going to be something which you will do for yourself and that will make you feel so complete because only once we learn to celebrate life that is when life will give you so much more to celebrate so every small or big thing which happens throughout the week keep a note of it be grateful about it and celebrate it so i'm hoping you have an amazing and a fabulously positive week only when you plan your week will you have the week in control and you know life will just not take you for granted and circumstances won't just happen to you you will create the circumstances you will create the life you deserve and you need thank you when i was growing up i was a fat child I believe in calling myself a plump child but I was technically fat who was not at all deserving of any love I got exactly that from the world The relationship I shared with myself was so inferior I used to hate to look at me I didn't accept myself I always found flaws in myself I believe I didn't deserve to be happy The most important relationship which we share is with ourselves and how little importance do we give them out there the world already was there to put me down at every step they called me fat big i was bullied as a child everybody laughed at me like everywhere i went people didn't believe in me the worst was i didn't believe in myself i didn't have the courage to look into the mirror to tell myself you're awesome and that was what was missing it was not the people around me it was me myself i looked at myself in the mirror and just looked how beautiful i was there was such a beautiful soul my exterior didn't even matter because inside i was the most warmest humble child anybody would have met and i knew that i knew that i had a soul which was there out here who would never harm anybody and that was most important today i look at the mirror and i tell myself you are beautiful how lucky are people around you to know you you deserve greatness You deserve love. You deserve everything amazing on this planet earth. You deserve all the happiness. And I end it by saying I love you. Because I truly love myself right now. Don't we expect people to come and tell us I love you or show affection to us? So right now in a day I tell myself I love you at least 20 times. When I'm driving the car I look at the mirror and say oh my god you gorgeous I love you. When I'm walking by the street and I see any mirror I look at myself and say oh my god this pretty girl how was she born in this world I make my self esteem so high at every given point that no matter what people around me say I don't get shattered my self esteem would have been a 2 on 10 I grew it every day by making myself believe in me by loving myself I hug myself so tight that nobody can hug me that tight I feel that warmth I feel that love from within When I was getting out of the house, I pep myself so high that I step out with a self-esteem of 10 on 10. And that is why I believe that the most important relationship anybody in this world can share is the relationship they share with themselves. So only when I am filled with love for myself and filled with love in every cell of my body, am I in the capacity to actually spread my love out to people who I really love. So the secret for an amazing relationship with everybody around you is have an amazing relationship first with yourself we keep a big goal to be a new resolution and then we get disappointed when we don't reach anywhere close to it in the first month of the year But guess what? It's not that we are not going to achieve it. It's just that we haven't set up the goal sensibly. 
So I would like for you to take out that one resolution you've set and you really want that to be achieved this year and break it down into small fragments. But what we do, we keep that big goal and we wonder, if I have to lose weight, I will keep that I want to lose 5 kgs and what happens the first month of course I'm just my body is just loosening up and I start wondering why is the weight not off my body. But it's the second month where weight loss will actually show up. But we set such big goals that we get disappointed the first month and we give up on a big goal. So I want you to stay put, know that you are on the right track, just break down your goals, make them more achievable, give them deadlines and you would see how beautifully you will enjoy the journey of attaining these small goals. So this year, promise yourself that you will not give up on your new year resolution. In fact, you would just take a different approach of breaking them down so that they become more achievable. Enjoy your best year ever. Thank you. Hey guys, we all tend to take advice from people around us when we are supposed to take a decision and this is just normal. We forget at times from whom we are taking the advice. So many times someone else's experience, belief, judgment starts affecting our decision. Someone might have a negative experience in that particular aspect. They give us advice from that perspective, not realizing that our experience can be completely different. Someone would have grown up with a different set of beliefs. And you know what? Their advice in that particular situation might not serve me. So just become aware and become conscious of whom you're taking the advice from. Listen to everybody, but only take that advice which will serve you on your journey. Thank you very much. This is Rishita Makija signing off. Hey guys, we all tend to take advice from people around us when we are supposed to take a decision and this is just normal. We forget at times from whom we are taking the advice. So many times someone else's experience, belief, judgment starts affecting our decision. Someone might have a negative experience in that particular aspect. They give us advice from that perspective, not realizing that our experience can be completely different. Someone would have grown up with a different set of beliefs. And you know what? Their advice in that particular situation might not serve me. So just become aware and become conscious of whom you're taking the advice from. Listen to everybody, but only take that advice which will serve you on your journey. Thank you very much. This is Rishita Makija signing off. If you all attempted to climb a cliff, there are days where the climb is really easy and there are days where the climb is really difficult where you wish you could give up. This is how life is. You have good days, you have bad days. It can be in your relationships or it can be in your professional front. There are moments you want to give up and you want to take a U-turn and go back down the cliff. But always remember, if it was easy, it wouldn't have been worth it. No, the bigger the cliff would be, it might just take a lot more time and a lot more of your effort but the view from the top would be as mesmerizing. That's how it's with life. The more time any relationship of yours takes or any goal of yours takes, the better would be the outcome. Throughout the journey of the climb, notice how there are so many stories and experiences you gather and that's how you should treat while you're at the climb. You will gain so many experiences, you will have so many stories to narrate to the world on how amazing your climb was and how amazing you felt when you reached the top. That's how it goes with life. Those are going to be your success stories. Have you read these stories from rack to riches and how someone got to some place where they really aspired to be? That's how they've climbed their cliff of life. So today, enjoy climbing the cliff of life in every aspect. Remember the journey. 
at any moment if you want to give up remember remember you're doing this for the view from the top is going to be worth every effort you put in because if it was easy it would have been this good start writing your success story today i'm sure you've liked the video so please like share comment and don't forget to subscribe on my youtube channel we human beings are expert in giving meaning to things which are never told to us someone might not even mean what they say they would just say a yes or a no and we would do the add on the story is built by us in our head as i always tell you my husband has been my you know biggest support in this whole work so when i started to blog and come out in the open every time i would write a blog i would send it to my husband like you know what's happened to him for him to read it So I remember one such incident where I sent him the blog and below the blog after like an hour because he didn't respond to my message after an hour I just wrote the word R E A D and when he comes back home from work I'm looking at him hoping that he would give me feedback because that's what he usually does and he's nowhere close to speaking about the blog to me and i'm waiting and waiting and i started getting like a little like he didn't like the blog what went wrong So finally I went up to him and asked him so you know what you read the blog because you told me a yes tell me what's the feedback like why are you not telling it to me so he looked at me and said when did i tell you i read the blog he said in my head r e a d was read but in your head it was r e a d read and i it suddenly struck me oh yeah he said yes i will read it i thought yes he read it and here the confusion happens a very small incident to let you all know how we complicate our life because of lack of communication we live in an era where technology plays such an important role we are half the time smsing whatsapping emailing or you know commenting on statuses that we any which ways have very little time to you know talk to someone face to face and in this whole era we've lost tolerance towards patiently sitting and listening to what the other person has to tell us or patiently telling the other person what we feel we have stopped expressing what we really want instead of creating meaning go ask the person is this what i'm thinking is that the fact what i'm thinking is that true is this what you mean by saying the no when you do something like this you're doing it to better your relationship It's not just about your spouse it can be with your family or friends at work start communicating communicating right communicate with patience tolerance clarity and be expressive let the person know what you really mean and if ever you have any doubt about anything don't create meanings of your own communication is a key to any successful relationship Stop listening to what people have never told to you. Don't create meaning. And every time you want to let someone know about something, explain it to them. Thank you so much guys for watching my video. You're now closer to recreating your destiny. Like, share, comment and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can help me help people recreate their destiny. Thank you very much. Thank you.